Hello everyone, today in this video we will be discussing the module 5 of DDCO super important questions and in this video if you watch till the end you can easily score more than 80% marks and there are just 4 questions and 2 varying questions which I will be telling you similar to the ones which are uh, present here and uh, based on the answers you can easily write the answers for these 2 as well okay so uh, make sure you watch, watch this video till the end and before starting please do like and subscribe it helps me make more videos like this so without wasting any more time let's get started the first question is explain the bus organization single bus organization of a computer and fundamental concept with a neat diagram okay firstly you have to make this important diagram okay this diagram is divided into two parts here there is a left part and here there is a right part okay in the left part there is all calculation happening okay calculations calculations and uh, data storage all those things are happening in the right hand part side you will be having the instruction execution and the control uh, executions all those uh, things okay those things will be happening here so firstly you will be writing control signals here instruction uh, decoder and control logic okay and below that you will be writing instruction register and here there will be general registers from r0 to r n minus 1 and here will be typed easy right first instruction decoder and control logic below that instruction register here will be having temporary registers and here will be having a temp okay now in the left hand side we will be having pc which is program counter it will always keep the count of which execution which instruction is being executed and which is the next instruction to be executed mar and mdr it is the memory address register and the memory data register those uh, both have the lines connected to the memory bus okay and here the main operation is happening this is the alu okay this whole thing the main operation happening the calculation part so for the calculation part we will be getting a y value here and a constant 4 will be selected here that will be going to the mux and based on the select value either constant 4 will be selected or the y value will be selected that will be provided to a okay <coughs> after that uh, another operand will be b based on a and b values the alu control lines will be uh, deciding what uh, is to be done addition subtraction multiplication division and so on so the carry bit will also be coming from here and the final answer will be present in z which will be gone to the uh, single memory bus and from here you can uh, take the value and store it in any register here or you can take the values from the register and uh, use that for the operation and that result can be stored in temp and all those things are possible okay so let's understand each one by one here the processor contains only a single bus okay for the movement of data address and instruction for the three operations data is also moved here instructions is also moved here and address is also moved here okay data and address lines are connected via mdr memory data register and mar memory address register lines respectively instruction decoder and control unit is responsible for decoding the instruction and issuing the control signals so what they will do is they will see what is the instruction and they will decode it and they will tell who, who has to do what okay that is instruction decoder and control unit processor register r0 to r n minus 1 are also known as general registers to store some temporary data in between and there are temporary registers specifically for the calculations y z and temp okay so this is all you have to uh, write for the first question moving on to the second question write and explain the control sequence for execution of instruction add r3 r1 this is a very very important and super repeated question here this question can also be asked in the same way like execution of complete instruction okay write and explain the control sequence for execution of complete instruction here also you have to write the same thing the answer remains same this is also instruction complete instruction execution but specifically they are mentioned if they have not mentioned also you have to take the same example and write the answer you got the point okay now consider the instruction add r3 to r1 okay what does this mean is r3 is a value which is pointing to some other value okay r3 is a address okay in that address what is stored so for example r3 is pointing to 7 okay and 7 is a address of some other value x so x will be taken and added with r1 r1 suppose it stores y so x and y will be added okay and the answer will be stored in r1 only which adds the content of the memory location pointed by r3 with r1 what is pointed by r3 that value will be added with r1 value and the result is stored in r1 so following steps are performed fetch the instruction which is the instruction add r3 r1 fetch the first operand what is the first operand r3 what is stored in r3 that value and perform the addition with r1 and then load the result in r1 only okay the following diagram shows the control sequence for the same you have to write the seven step control sequence okay very important now pc out mar in read this is one part and select for add z in is another part okay so let's understand each of these uh, steps one by one in step one we do pc out mar in and read what is pc pc is program counter program counter out means the instruction of the program counter which is to be performed that will be out means it will be sent and where it will come mar in mar in means memory address register in so the instruction will be sent to the memory address register and memory address register what it will do it will go to that specific memory location and it will keep ready it will do the read operation okay from that memory it will read the uh, value the request for read from the memory 
this is what happens request for read from the memory okay and select for add z in select for means the mux is selected and add z in means the pc's content is stored in z okay means in z register the value of pc's content is stored after that z out pc in y in wmfc z out means whatever we stored in z that will be out and it will be sent to pc in pc is pointing to the next instruction okay so what happens is this will complete the pc instruction the previous one and pc will point to the next instruction okay MDR out IR in from the memory data register uh, it will go and it will get stored in instruction register to be performed okay this is the fetch content of MDR move to IR step 1 to 3 is called as fetch phase okay so this three step is called what fetch phase okay after that R3 out MAR in read from R3 the value uh, which is there in the register R3 that will be stored in MAR in that is for the second operand okay so that will be also read so the second operand value is read from the mem uh, main memory okay then r1 out y in wmfc contents of r1 is transferred to y for addition now we have r3 we have r1 we have to use these two to add both of them so r1 out will do that same thing it will move the value to the y after that we will do mdr out select y add z in value of r1 uh, is stored in y that y value will be selected and it will be added with r3 out which is stored in mdr okay so r3 plus r1 will be happening here and that will, will be stored in z in okay after that z out will happen and the, it will be uh, transferring the value to r, uh, r1 in only okay so finally r1 will be having what value r3 uh, plus r1 okay so sum is stored in z it is transferred to r1 end signal indicates that next instructions is to be started okay so this is all you have to write the diagram and sing, uh, of this control sequence and each step you have to explain in depth okay Moving on to the third super important question, explain the uh, with an example different types of hazard uh, that occur during the pipelining. Another question which can be asked similar to this is explain the performance of pipeline. Okay, and what is a pipeline? Explain performance of pipeline. Or they can ask this one with an example, explain different types of hazard. So first I'll be explaining you what is a pipeline and performance of pipeline. Okay, what is a pipeline? Pipeline is a, a particularly effective way of organizing a concurrent activity on a computer system. So many activities are there. We are organizing them into a single pipe. So that is that is why it is called as a pipeline. Okay, it is just organized the uh, activities okay one way to improve performance is to use faster circuit okay and another way is to arrange software so that more operations can be performed at the same time okay so we'll be arranging the operations in such a way that until this is performed this will also be performed and simultaneously this will be performed simultaneously this will be performed instead of uh, this will get finished then this then this then this it will take more time right so we'll be arranging it in such a way that there is no dependency between these two and independently they can perform in the same time okay so that kind of arrangement we'll do in pipelining but the potential to increase in performance resulting from the pipelining is proportional to the number of stages in the pipeline there will be stages in the pipeline first stage second stage third fourth fifth like how many stages are there and uh, in each stage some uh, task will be performed simultaneously in this stage this will be performed simultaneously in this stage this will be performed simultaneously and so on so based on number of stages increases the uh, potential performance also increases but it, this does not always happen because sometimes hazards can happen or pipeline stalls can happen mainly there are three type of hazards how many type of hazards are there three type of hazards first is data hazard second is control hazard third is structural hazard data hazard by the name itself you can understand data is not available when data is not available it is called as data hazard when control is not available control means instruction which is to be performed that is not available it is called as control hazard when structural hazard happens when two instructions are using the same resources if this is uh, uh, instruction one and this is instruction two and this is resource one instruction one also requires this one and instruction two also requires this one for its execution then both of them will not uh, work and that will be a structural hazard so examples also you have to draw this is the example for data hazard just make a pipeline here f d e w okay and f d e w and e make it as a long one because it is taking more time because of data pre not present execution phase of stage two took more time so there will be a stall here and this two things cannot be performed simultaneously so this is called as data hazard in instruction hazard as you can see the fetch instruction was present here the d instruction was not uh, fetched so it took a lot of time see the idle 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 because of this one uh, condition the other two also got affected okay because of instruction not available what is to be performed next structural hazard what will happen is in this structural hazard you will be having these things where these two resources uh, these two are using this same resources i3 and i4 okay so that's why both are not able to execute uh, simultaneously okay that was about the different hazards and pipeline performance moving on to the fourth super important question and the last one explain how dlu performs and arithmetic and logic operations along with input gating diagrams okay 
so in this question basically what you have to do is you have to first make this diagram okay don't get scared this is very easy diagram this part you already know right this part we already discussed in the complete instruction uh, cycle execution question right here you'll be writing mux and constant 4 will be there another input will be y okay mux will have two inputs constant 4 and y and for the mux will be given to a here and b in uh, value will be coming from the bus here and this is arithmetic logic unit and this is z in uh, flag and here we'll be having a z register and the result will be stored in z out here okay so z in and z out is the extra thing you have to make here after that the above part is very similar there is a register here to take in register it is r in to take out from register it is r out and if it is y in means it is uh, y in means uh, the value to be taken in y okay so very simple you just have to make the register one register here and alu thing here and z thing here okay and you have to make a single bus got it very easy one and uh, input and output getting for one register bit okay for the one register bit also it's very simple you just have to, you just have to make uh, the mux here with zero and one okay what you will make you'll make a mux with zero and one and this is a select which is r i in okay and this will be gone to uh, the next uh, sequence here in this sequence you will have a d flip top where it is q and uh, q bar okay and this will be connected with ri out okay very easy this is ri in it goes to a d flip top ri out and this will be interconnected and this answer will be interconnected to zero okay so this diagram you have to make and you have to write the following key points flags ri in and ri out are used these are called as getting signal okay in exp uh, question explicitly they had asked what is getting signals so ri in and ri out these are the getting signals okay ri in one means data on the bus is loaded into ri okay means see ri in where it happens ri in is happening at this point in this point what's happening the data from the bus is getting loaded into register so that is ri in means data on the bus is loaded into ri ri out means content of register are placed on the bus okay in this diagram if you see ri out means the content of the register is placed on the bus okay all the operations and the data transfer within the processor table are placed within the time periods defined by the processor clock okay there will be a processor clause based, based on which the operations will be performed and the data transfers will be happening okay and alu is a combinational circuit okay it has no internal storage it performs the arithmetic and logic operations on the two operands applied to its input a and b so this is alu and two inputs will be there a input and b input how many inputs are there in alu a input and b input okay alu gets two operands from the mux and another one from the bus okay this results in a temporary storage uh, temporarily stored register z where it gets the operands from one is from mux as i told you in the diagram if you see observe carefully the mux will be having one input a and the other one will be taken from the bus uh, that is the input b so alu performs the operation both on the inputs a and b and that will be stored in z okay z is the temporary register where the result is stored after the uh, storing of the uh, result in the temporary register that will be sent back to the main bus okay it's a single bus uh, sequence okay so these are the uh, sequence of operations which are being performed the uh, value uh, in the r3 uh, that value is equal to r1 plus r2 okay the value which is stored in r1 plus where the value which is stored in r2 that will be added and that will be stored in r3 okay so the uh, sequence of operation will be as follows r1 out the value of r1 will be out and uh, stored in y r2 out will be stored and selected with y and added okay see r1 out value came and so y value is selected so y has r1 r2 and r1 get selected and added and the value stored in z in so z in what it has r1 plus r2 values okay r1 and r2 values and those values are stored in z from the z it will be transferred to r3 so basically what happened r3 is equal to r1 plus r2 got the point okay so these are the four super important questions uh, don't miss any of these questions in this uh, module and uh, please do like and subscribe it helps me make more videos like this and thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next one